Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jugs, and uh, um, you're going to hear me talking with my buddy Blacklight Attack. Uh, he also posts videos on YouTube, gaming videos on YouTube. Cool dude, check him out. He posts TF2, and uh, he plays this game too, so I'm, I imagine that he'll post Tribe's gameplay as soon as he feels confident enough in his ability to be able to do successfully well enough for a YouTube video. I'm sure he'll post some stuff. Uh, but for now, I can pretty much only guarantee that he posts TF2. I can't promise that he'll post er he'll ever post Tribes because I don't know that information. But check him out if you like. Uh, I'll link him in the description, and he'll also be on my YouTube homepage and my sub box, Blacklight Attack. Check him out. But the point of this video is not to shout out, sh shout out my buddy Blacklight Attack, as awesome of a bro as he is. The point of this video is to actually provide you guys with a pro tip for the map Dry Dock, which is this map you're seeing right now. Specifically for how, uh, you know, for a unorthodox but really, really effective and efficient way to pull the flag. Pretty much a flag route that I, I want to show you guys. And it's up this hill, which is weird because you see me, I'm going so slow. I'm pretty much just walking up this hill when I get kind of to the peak. And that seems a little weird and unorthodox. And it is weird and, un and unorthodox. But I guarantee you it is a golden, golden strategy. Especially if you're a meteor class because... You know, when you approach from it, the traditional sense is that you approach from a high, uh, a high uh, vantage point, then you hit the slope hard and you build momentum on the way down, and you would preferably choose to hit, some, uh, you know, downward slopes as you're on your way to your home base to cap the flag. Well, the thing about it is, uh, you know, obviously, uh, if you're doing everything perfectly fine as a pathfinder the the fastest class in the game the fastest classes in the game y you can you can get away with that 100 percent of the time uh you know unless they have really really heavily guarded turrets but if they do have heavily guarded turrets like that's the only way it's going to work if the turret is if the generator is down uh if you're not going to get owned by turrets and if you're really exceptional at uh or or at the very least you're much better than the other team at at skiing and and gaining speed because uh you know when you give them when you approach from a high vantage point and you go towards a downward slope you're also giving the enemy team that opportunity to build momentum because they can also use the same slopes that you're using from the stationary point that they're at defending the base and the thing about this this path that I'm taking, it's it's kind of weird because, you know, like I mentioned before, it doesn't make sense to want to go slower. But if you really think about it, the point is the point in this game is not necessarily to go fast. I know that sounds weird. Tribes not go fast? Like, how does that make any sense? Well, the point of this game is to cap flags. And I know that sounds stupid, but when you really think about it, the point of capping flags is to separate yourself, distance yourself from the people that want to prevent you from capping the flags and uh, bring it home, bring bring the bring the flag home in one piece, and that doesn't necessarily have to be synonymous with speed 100% of the time, which is something that you're gonna realize here uh, when I choose to go even slower. But uh, so the thing about it, the reason that this this strategy is so effective, especially for for slower classes, is that typically the enemy isn't going to play you so that that they're not going to anticipate you grabbing the flag and build momentum while they see you off in the distance about to grab the flag and then chase you down and have that speed to match you uh, via preparation what they're typically going to do is they're going to deny you the, the the flag cap as soon as they possibly can by killing you before you get the flag or killing you as soon as you touch it by launching a, a premature uh, uh, you know, uh, spin fuser shot at the flag in anticipation of you being there to, to grab it. And in situations where the enemy team is preparing for you and instead of denying you the flag, they're building momentum in anticipation of you getting the flag to kill you mid chase rather than at the point of uh, the, the, the flag grab, then you're not going to want to use the strategy unless you're another light class and you can build more momentum than they can. Uh, but you know, it's kind of like a situational thing. You have to read the enemy team and see what they're doing. See if they're smart enough to be able to do that and not, not go for the instant gratification and instead plan ahead and, and play you with patience. And typically no one does that. You're not going to see that very often in, in pubs. And so this strategy for dry dock is going to be extremely effective, especially if you're a meaty class, because what it allows you to do is build all of this momentum before you're even in the vicinity for the enemy team to see you. So as a as 
a meteor class you'll hit speeds of like 200 175 if you're doing it right uh, somewhere in that range even faster just depends on you completely uh, at your skiing ability as a meaty class and they're not going to know you're coming until you know you're already about to grab the flag if you approach from the low side and by the time that happens even if they're pathfinders or even they're, if they're jumpers or what have you from the point where they're defending they're typically going to be hanging around their base waiting for somebody to touch the flag and then they chase that's how they work uh typically but like i said this isn't you know sometimes you're going to get that pro in your lobby that's going to know how to play you perfectly and in that situation this isn't going to help but you're going to have all this momentum even as a heavier class so that when you grab that flag and you uh you know you're you're going up that hill they have to start building momentum from a stationary position and they're gonna have to go from zero to 200 to, to 175 in an instant to be able to match your speed to go up that hill and although they have the potential to like you know get to to much higher speeds than you can with much faster acceleration the point is that you're limiting the the time that they're allotted to accelerate by choosing this route where you're approaching an incline rather than a decline in slope so that you know really the person that's going to get to the top is not who can accelerate the fastest but who hits the 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 uh, upward incline with momentum already behind them and that's going to be you as the you know person using this unorthodox method that they're not going to expect they're typically going to expect people to to want to go down slopes to build speed obviously and don't worry like even if you get to the top of the hill and you're having to walk don't panic because if you do it right they're going to be walking way before you start walking. And that means that even though you're about, you know, like 10 meters or, or a pretty dangerous distance between each other, if you're on top of the other side of that hill and they're right on the, the you know, the bottom of the, 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 the peak of the hill and they're, you're both walking, although it can be a little nerve wracking because you know you're so close to each other. It's not as close as you think because you're going to hit that downward slope and you're going to start blazing. You're going to go right by them and they're going to have to walk. They're going to have to keep walking until they hit that slope themselves. And by the time that happens, you know, you've already distanced yourself. And you can obviously see that in this gameplay. I get four flag caps using the same strategy. So uh, this is especially effective for, for meteor classes that can't accelerate. You're taking advantage of the fact that, that you know, you're limiting the amount of time that you allow the other team's classes, uh, fast classes classes to accelerate and uh, you're taking advantage of the fact that they're not going to know when you're coming uh you know that's what she said that's no homo <clears throat> you're not going to know they're not going to know when exactly you're going to grab the flag and so they have to react last second and build that momentum last second and like i said you're limiting the amount of time they have to accelerate and they're not going to be able to match your speed they're not going to be able to get up that hill fast enough and even if they do launch themselves uh with with other ways not dependent on slopes like disc jumping or, or uh disc launching themselves especially the lighter classes they're going to take way too much damage even with the 30 percent damage decrease that the pathfinder can get as a final perk they're going to take way too much damage to be able to efficiently get up that slope to match your momentum that you've already built on the way there so this is something to really take into account it's a really easy way to play dry dock that not many people really really uh apply this is not a strategy that many people apply but anyways hope this was informative i'll catch you guys later peace out this has been jux